Yo, how's everybody doing? So I just wanted to make a quick video. I'm back from the trip to uh, the North American Bitcoin Conference in Miami. So settling back in LA and getting some stuff done. But I wanted to update you guys a little bit as we settle to get back into the news. There's a few things going around. We're starting the week. It's Monday. So I wanted to take care and let you guys know what's up. There's a lot of awesome exclusive interviews that I got. Uh, I'm going to be putting together and releasing throughout this week. So make sure you check those out. You're going to learn about all sorts of things. I've got interviews with people like Jeffrey Tucker, uh, Crypto Bobby, uh, Bits Be Trippin' about mining, about a new stock related to Dash. Very, really cool stuff, guys, like honestly. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. And and to see that uh, I got to meet some people who've been watching this channel since like F was six bucks that are still watching the channel was really really rewarding to hear about how their lives were changed uh, and I still think it's very very in the game but I'll get into that now I wanted to talk about Korea real quick um, a lot there's still a lot of FUD going around the markets everybody's freaking out like why are the prices still moving down Bitcoin's down seven bucks Ethereum is back down below a thousand bucks again and the market cap has dropped significantly since its all-time high back when Bitcoin almost hit like 20,000 bucks around that range. So there's people, you know, just not certain, really unsure about what's going on. So I wanted to just give you a little bit of an update as to maybe why you should even be interested in holding cryptocurrencies, of course, moving forward. If you're new to this, obviously, if you've been around for a while, you understand a little bit more that patience is the key here to hodl, hodl on. So Korea apparently has been the target because they were going to ban cryptocurrencies. It turns out they weren't really trying to ban cryptocurrencies. They were trying to de-anonymize cryptocurrency and make it so that if you are a bank, you get that information from when customers are moving that money into cryptocurrencies exchanges and so that these exchanges have to reveal the names, the real names in this new real name system they're calling it whenever users use these systems in South Korea, which is indeed one of the biggest markets. But I like to remind people that we had similar situation last year with China. And uh, it, it was it was what kind of led to South Korea being at the forefront of liquidity and volume in these exchanges. They picked up the slack and so did Japan a lot when China started having a lot of concerns about what the government was going to do. So I'm just saying if Korea was to ever do anything, you can bet your butt it would pop up some pop up somewhere else. But anyway, actually six banks are now going to be enabling trading again for people who are anonymous, for people who already had accounts by the end of this month or toward the beginning of next month. Six of the major banks specifically, the top banks out there. And it's really for people who already have accounts. Signups for new accounts are still going to be closed a little bit for the near term. And we'll have to monitor the situation to see what's coming up. But that's actually a positive thing. The, however, there was this financial consumer agency that was looking out for people. And they are actually putting the president on blast, the president Moon Jai, Jay, I can't, I don't know, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. They put him on blast saying, you know, you're, you kind of let the press run away with this... Uh, with this crazy fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and let everybody think that this was going to happen, and it, and it kind of paved the way for manipulation to happen. And you have yet to issue any sort of an official word, either criticizing or like and, and, and accepting or accepting cryptocurrency, saying that it's either good or bad. So it's leading to confusion in the market since other people are taking advantage of the situation, and it's affecting things. Even despite a petition trying to get an official word from him, that, of him that has over 200,000 signatures, there were other people that were trying to create petitions to boot officials out of the Korean government. So you're hearing kind of this clash between the state agencies and the upper tier of government and the financial services industries out there in Korea, and nothing seems certain except for the fact that uh, there's going to be less anonymity <laughs> out there, and that's kind of what would be best, of course, so they can continue to tax it while not necessarily putting a halt and shooting themselves in the foot by banning cryptocurrencies. But that's what's up with that. Also, Ethphoenix. So you guys might have known about Ethphoenix. That's Bitfenix's exchange for Ethereum-based tokens. So Bitfenix is one of the biggest exchanges in the world, and they actually were hacked last year for huge amounts of money. I believe over $350 million worth of Bitcoin they were hacked for. And it... It was a really, a really interesting scenario that actually caused quite a dip in the markets. And they issued this token that would be redeemable over time for when they became liquid and, and had the full money again. But they shaved everybody at the top off the top 
when Bitcoins were stolen. So even if you had like Ether on the exchange, then they shaved about, I think, 30% of everybody's tokens off the top on that exchange. But, you know, people have a short-term memory and there's a lot of people in the space that haven't been around that long and they aren't aware uh, how Bitfinex handled the situation. Though it all kind of worked out, but they still have managed to keep their reputation, surprisingly enough, along with some other major exchanges like Poloniex, Kraken, Bitrix. They've been around for a while, but it's interesting to me that Bitfinex is still so reputable. But... Uh, you know, they work with this whole USD Tether token. So USDT is kind of actually the CEO is, at, from my understanding, he runs both Tether and Bitfinex. And Tether is a US dollar, one for one backed cryptocurrency asset. The thing is a bunch of it keeps getting created and spawned seemingly out of nowhere. There has been no formal official audit despite cries and requests from the community saying hey we're holding these tokens we want to know if you actually have a dollar to back every single token that exists since we're using this for margin trading you might be using it to go long on bitcoin or you know but it opens the way for manipulation because if you're an exchange and you also are like the reserve bank that prints money that comes into exchanges then you have to say that kind of seems fishy if nobody has ever uh, formally counted the funds there now Bitfinex has been working on something called Ethfinex, which we just talked about, which will, the ultimate goal is be completely decoupled from a centralized exchange kind of way. So it'll be something that completely works on smart contracts. You will be able to access, hopefully without permission, as I think would be the goal. Although I don't understand why a centralized company like Bitfinex would make it completely permissionless because they still, I don't know, whatever. I guess they, make, they could make money charging fees on the smart contract platform. But point is... It's still centralized. You still need an account through Bitfinex. It's not open to places like in the U.S. since eventually they made it, you know, they don't want to get lawsuits. What if Tether turns out to be, for example, not solvent? Uh, that could lead to a lot of legal issues. And it's, let's just say regulations are a little bit easier to get around in other places around the United States. So they made us all close our accounts and take our funds out of there. Just recently, actually, Bitfinex. So now Fphoenix has today enabled and supported deposits and withdrawals for USD Tether uh, built on an ERC-20 token system. So basically they made Tether and they took it from the Bitcoin Omni platform thingy that it was running on and they made an Ethereum token that is supposedly worth $1 because there's always $1 worth in reserve. Either whether it's true or not, the perception is that they have it. So it should technically always be uh, trading for a dollar or able to deposit for a dollar no matter what. It'll be interesting to see how that works through smart contracts. But the point is, Ethphoenix now supports deposit and withdrawal of USD Tether and the Euro Tether, Euro Tether back Tether. So people can now use that to hedge out of Ethereum. Oh, man. We'll see how this plays out. I think it's really, really interesting, and I definitely wanted to give you the heads up on that as Tether continues to grow. I also wanted to share with you just some thoughts. So I was watching Bix Weir's channel. Uh, shout out to Bix. Check out his channel, B-I-X. And Bix uh, was talking about how Cliff High of HalfPassHuman.com predicted using his web bots that scour the internet for information and assign uh, emotional values to the information that his bots and spiders find and therefore can predict future events actually pretty uncannily well sometimes. And he predicted back in the day, Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin hitting 1388, 13888 by mid-February. And it actually hit like 20,000. Everybody was saying, well, I guess you were wrong, Cliff. And Cliff was like, that's just what the data says. I'm just, I'm just showing what the data says. And now we've since pulled back. So we have Bitcoin right now at $10,600 insanely today. So it actually looks on track to hit 1388, at least in the short term. So I definitely encourage people, I'm not saying it's true or not, to hold on. Definitely look into Cliff. I'll, we're probably going to have him on the show very, very soon. So thanks uh, to my girl. And who was it, babe, that helped set up the interview with Cliff? But um, thanks to him. So we're going to have him on the show very, very soon, hopefully, to hear his thoughts. But I'm saying that's kind of still like a 20%. Sean Swenson. Sean Swenson. Thanks, Sean, uh, for helping to set that up. And, and that's at least 20% up from here, if you think that's true, if you've been following him. So you know, I encourage you to hold on if you're a little hesitant. Also, keep in mind, guys, that and I was running through a post. There's over 1. Oh, I'm sorry, 2.1 quadrillion 
dollars worth of wealth out there that exists. You, do you know what that is? Two point one quadrillion. That's why the governments really don't. This is a dime in the bu dime in the bucket. Wall Street still doesn't really care that much. Uh, regulators really don't care. The banks don't care about a five hundred billion dollar market. Five hundred billion. Then double that to trillion, and then you multiply that times a thousand. So then, like, let's just say that there's a lot of money and wealth out there in the world, and you know, the interesting thing is that people look around and say, okay, so the government got bailed out in 2008. They bailed out the banks in 2008 and printed through quantitative easing in this new program. That's a way to print more money, basically what it was. They 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 funneled a lot of wealth, but not into the average person who might have lost their house's money. Although in some cases it did work out, work out in that way. But mostly into the hands of the banks. So from the top level, build out the same people who got us into, this, into that situation. Leading to movements like Occupy Wall Street. And to new, no new laws being created. Because the people at the top got bailed out. They got what they needed. No further regulations were added. And why would they regulate themselves further and make less money? No, we'll just take our, that extra money the government built us out. So we could keep uh, ourselves in business. And we'll give ourselves bonuses and they'll let some places like Bear Stearns and, and the Lehman Brothers collapse. But generally, let's just say that there was inflation. There were trillions of dollars that were printed uh, into creation after that point. Just head to the usdebtclock.org and you guys can, can uh, start to look at the amount of money just in debt here in the United States that exists. But um, that money didn't go nowhere. It went into, into inflation, all right, but not inflation in our regular prices like milk and stuff. It went into housing it went into real estate it went to stocks and bonds and continued to move up and that money is somewhere let's just say it's not nowhere a lot of it exists exists electronically on paper but it's still wealth that is slowly finding its way into cryptocurrency it's going to make its way into your hands if you're here early let's just say that and it is absolutely early everyone still has their concerns uh, you know, I don't have the money to invest now. What is $20 a day? One of my friends told me, what is me putting $20 a week? I'm sorry, into cryptocurrency going to do? What is that going to do? I'm like, well, $20 a week times 56 in a year. Uh, plus you get to enjoy all the multiplied gains exponentially. And let's just say that that's a lot of money. Let's just do the math. And then you would have been really well off now. Instead, uh, you're, you're still talking about what you might've missed out. And I still think this is early. I will explain to you guys why I feel very soon that this is next wave is going to be the biggest wave that we've ever seen of new influx of money into crypto. And it's pretty gosh darn early. I can't tell you which ones will be the winners. Right now, it looks like, you know, you could throw darts on a board, put names for different cryptocurrencies, pick one, and you're still going to get huge gains at some point as long as you're hodling. I mean, there was this one coin I've been holding, uh, EBTC, for example, shot up like 22% recently. They had a vote on Twitter, you might have seen there, where they were going to try to be added to a KuCoin exchange, so people had to vote to add them to the exchange, and they won, so the price shot up, and that, that happens, like, there's always a little bit of news for every single coin, that's like Ethereum on the Bitcoin blockchain, what's really cool, though, is that that project gave back, I wanted to give a quick spotlight to that, they gave back in the form of charity to water.org, so they're actually going to give an equivalent amount of e-bitcoins not even dollars worth but e-bitcoins to the charity so that's pretty darn good based on the amounts of votes that they got so congrats to that i wanted to give a shout out to barry dutton who has been dealing with litigation after he's one of our viewers been support, supported on this channel and he actually got hit on an intersection walking across it and had lost ability to interact with half of his body uh restrained just restrained imagine dealing with a lawsuit, PTSD, and finally things are looking a little bit better with his lawyer uh, uh, today. So props to Barry. Thanks for letting me know, man. I appreciate that. Definitely care. Uh, and I wanted to give you guys a heads up because people seem really concerned about taxes. What, what is up with taxes? Well, we can get into more details soon, but one really good resource for crypto taxes is Bitcoin.tax. I'm going to put a link in the description below and go ahead and check that out. It's pretty cheap. It's like $30 for the whole year. If you want to have up to, I think, 5,000 transactions, there's a free option there too. And there is, I think, 100 for like the best option that they have out there. And they import your trades. You can add mining uh, income. You can add income you earn in the form of airdrops if you want to do that. It really goes as high level or low level and nitty gritty as you want to do. And they generate all that information for you. They make it really easy. They'll import from places like Bitcoin, GDAX. So check that out, guys, if you're interested in, in uh, checking out your tax situation. 
before it's too late. But uh, yeah, take care, guys. I hope you're doing well. We'll be back again with these interviews and with the news this week. And I uh, hope you're doing awesome. Much love. Thanks for the support. Everybody that I ran into at the conference. I'll see you guys at the next one. Anarchapulco, most likely. Uh, take care, guys. Hit like if you appreciate the news. Stay cryptic. Uh, hit a like, subscribe. Please share this video if you found it informative. Uh, you can share it on Reddit, Facebook. Join our Facebook group. And uh, definitely let me know your comments on anything that we talked about below. I'd love to read it. Stay cryptic.